hey there, thanks for stopping by. You would not believe how cold it is in here today. <laughs> but I am in the shed to try some easy, simple, like so easy, so simple, colour graphs for the festive season. All you need is an old cereal packet like this one, one that has a shiny kind of surface on the outside, and some glue and some scissors. If you have it, it's great to use some printing ink when you get to the printing stage. I've just got some water-based SD inks. So cold! This is just like an ice block. <laughs> But you can also give it a go with acrylic paints. You might just need to add a bit of an extender kind of medium just so that it doesn't dry too quickly on your plate surface before you've printed from it. Oh, and you'll need some paper to print on. I'm just going to be using plain printer paper for mine. Grab your cereal box and let's try it. First, I want to make a background base plate for my design. I can cut along one of the folds of the box to open it up and then cut along the next fold over to separate out a nice large piece. Trim away the rough flappy edges and I have a neat rectangle to use as my base. I'm going to be creating a design of three hanging baubles so I've grabbed three different sized items which I can draw around to get nice neat circles. You could use a compass if you like or of course go freehand. I cut out the circles with scissors and I'm starting to position the circles roughly on the plate to get an idea of where they'll sit in my design. As you do this, remember that your final print will be a reversed image of your plate. Cutting slivers of card will create the strings of the baubles. I'm cutting them longer than I think I need and then cutting them down when I have decided more firmly on the design. To create the little nublet on top of the bauble <laughs> <laughs> is is bauble nublet the term? <laughs> you know, it's the, it's the bit which allows the bauble to be strung. <laughs> I'm cutting a small rectangle or a square for the smaller bauble and then snipping off the top two corners. The shape can then be placed between the bauble and the string. For the larger bauble, to make the two shapes fit more seamlessly together, I'm using the edge of the circle as a guide and cutting a curve into the bottom of the rectangle. Now is a good time to flip the plate. Here is the important thing to remember. Anything we stick down onto the plate needs to be shiny side up. Due to the patterns on the outside of the cereal box, it can be harder to visualise the design on this side, which is why it's handy to map things out on the plain side before we start sticking. I'm laying out the design again on the shiny side and once happy, I can draw around my key elements. That way I'll have a guide for where to stick them later on. I'm drawing a simple design onto the large bauble. The handy thing is by drawing it onto the plain side like this, I know that it'll automatically get flipped when I stick it down shiny side up later. I'm cutting just a smidge to the right of my guideline. Then I'm cutting a smidge to the left of the line. I'm doing this with each of the lines I've drawn and then placing the pieces back together with a small gap in between them. The gaps will create the design in the print later on. Using PVA glue, I'm flipping the pieces on the bauble over and sticking them down one by one, lining them back up together on the backboard. Then I'm sticking down the bauble nublet and the string. I do this same process for the other two baubles, but with different cut designs for each of them. For one bauble, I'm adding on a few sequins. You can absolutely add on extras like this, but if you do, make sure that they are things with a shiny surface. I'm also adding some tin foil to break up the background a bit. This will add a variation into the print textures that we can get later. If I had thought of this at the start, I would have stuck this foil down in one piece as the very first thing and then stuck everything else on top of it. <laughs> but as I am adding it later, I'm cutting out rough pieces to fit around my baubles. Before sticking them down, I'm scrunching them lightly to create a little bit more texture. You can go as detailed as you like with the plate, but I'm keeping this design simple. Once everything is stuck down, leave it to fully dry. Time to print. I have a blob of blue ink in a pot and a bristly brush and I'm just roughly covering the whole plate with it. A little ink goes a long way, so don't feel like you need a thick covering. 
I have a loose weave cloth and I'm using it to lightly pull away a bit of the ink in the background areas, using circular motions to create more interesting textures and break up the brush stroke marks. On the upper foil section, I'm using more of a dabbing motion to create a lighter covering. Then I'm going back in to make sure that there is ink on the strings, just in case I removed a bit too much by accident with the cloth. I'm using a little bit of white ink to add lighter tones to the bauble edges and dabbing the brush about to break up the brush strokes. Then it's time for the first print. Placing the piece of paper straight down onto the plate, I'm using my hands to apply even texture, feeling around the plate to push the paper into the textures. Then I'm using my thumb to localise the pressure to the edges of each bauble and the ridges of the patterns on each, as well as the strings. With other more textured forms of collagraph, I use thin papers which are dampened down so that they can bend into deeper crevices without tearing. However, because this cardboard is so thin and the design is so flat, we can get away with using standard paper which is fully dry. The whole reason we have used the shiny surface of the cardboard and shiny things stuck onto it is so that the ink will be able to transfer away from that surface and onto the paper. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh, I like it. I love how boldly the bauble designs have come out and I'm really enjoying the background textures. It has very rustic vintage vibes. So let's try throwing a couple of other colours into the mix. Using a little water on a cloth, I'm removing the blue ink from two of the baubles. I'm leaving one bauble with its top and bottom blue, and I'm leaving the background as it is. I'm adding yellow ink to the smallest bauble, letting some of the blue remnants mingle in on the edge to create green shadows. On the large bauble, I'm going full festive red with some white and yellow highlights on the edge. Let's see how this one goes. Ooh, yes, pretty jolly, no? <laughs> I like the primary colours bouncing around together. And I quite like that I didn't add anything more to the background on this one. It has a super subtle texture back there, but I like it. I really like how they've come out. What do you think? I love how you could take just one of these baubles and cut it out, stick it on a Christmas card if you wanted. They are super simple, super easy to try, and I really hope you enjoy exploring the process. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. And let me know in the comments, what are you doing to start feeling a little bit festive this season? Keep making happy and I'll see you next time.